But is this much talked about equation really the best way to measure our health? Body mass index, or BMI, is a measure that uses your height and weight to work out if you're at a healthy weight by dividing your weight in kilograms by your height in meters. For most adults, an ideal BMI is between 18.5 and 24.9. I think we've struggled over the years to find a way of measuring how fat or how healthy we are. We used to do it in stones and pounds, now we're doing it in kilograms. I mean, when I was a child, it was always, you knew how many stone you should weigh. And we're now sort of veering away from that in terms of, well, actually weight may not be absolutely the ideal way of monitoring whether you're healthy or not. So you take two 10-year-old children and one is one weight and one is the other and say, well, you're not healthy and you're not. Well, there's all sorts of other things. One is taller. So BMI really takes into account weight and height. And by doing a very simple, quick formulation, it gives you a single figure and you can tell if you're above 25, you're, you need to lose some weight. And if you're below 25, you're OK and you can maintain your weight. So I think it's useful as a measuring tool for how, uh, how your body is. But just how foolproof is BMI? Certainly one of the limitations of BMI is people who have a very large muscle mass. I think there were figures that a couple of years ago of several rugby players who had a BMI that would, was obese, and they're obviously not. Um, I do think it's important to keep perspective. So for example, at the population level in England, where we know that BMI is rising, we also know that physical activity participation is going down. So at a population level, we are getting fatter. For some people, if they've got a very high muscle proportion, they will probably be heavier than someone with a less high muscle proportion because muscle weighs more. But again, some people find it incredibly difficult to put on weight and some people find it incredibly difficult to lose and they sit at, at different weights. Two people of the same height will be different weights and shapes and sizes, build, bone, density. Most people just know, just look in the mirror and think, I need to lose a bit of weight. <laughs> I wonder whether or not actually we're missing the point in terms of focusing solely on weight, in that if we're actually interested in people's health, we need to be thinking about other factors, such as sleep, but also exercise as well. What we tend to find is that if we just look at a person's BMI, it tells us almost nothing about their health. Someone who is 5 feet 10 and 10 stone, they could be achieving that by smoking 20 cigarettes and starving themselves. They could be doing that by having a healthy diet. You can't tell. One of the big problems with BMI is the way we use it. It was designed as a population measure, and it's useful for measuring millions of people. Giving individual feedback to school children at five and 10 years old, telling them that they are overweight or obese based on a measure that was never designed to do that is a blatant misuse of BMI. And that's a problem because being overweight isn't necessarily bad for your health. If you've got a BMI of 25, 26 or 27, you're classed as overweight, but it's not likely that it's bad for your health, as long as you haven't got diabetes or other problems. And of course, as long as you're happy with your weight. I think more and more it's realised now that carrying extra weight, being a health concern, partly depends on where you carry it. So it's the visceral fat around the internal organs that we can't see that is actually the danger. Um, and you can be relatively slim, but still have a lot of visceral fat, known as skinny fat. And that's equally dangerous as being really overweight and having a lot of visceral fat. And so that's the challenge more and more. So we've learned that our weight doesn't necessarily reflect our well-being. But is there an easy way to tell whether we're at risk of health problems? The one I like is what we call our waist to hip ratio. It's dead easy to do, it's cheap. You could do it at your doctor's surgery, you could do it yourself, right? And you basically, you measure your waist and you measure your hip. And you, you do your waist divided by your hip, right? And basically you're looking for your waist to be lower than your hip. We know that that is a pretty good marker of your risk of getting problems in the future. So, do our experts think BMI is an effective measurement of health? In our survey, 50% think it isn't. 